Our first topic in this module is the practice of shamanism and its use for healing and aging in many indigenous societies around the world. Throughout much of human history, the religious needs of human communities have been served by shamans. These are part-time religious practitioners with special abilities to connect individuals with supernatural powers and beings. More formal religious organizations with trained specialists and elaborate moral rules and ritual practices are fairly recent in human history, spanning two to 3,000 years at most. The term shaman derives from the name given to healing specialists among the semi-nomadic people of Siberia, but it has since been applied to healers, spiritualists, witches, and witch doctors in cultures worldwide. Shamans live as part of the local community. They participate in daily activities and work, but are called on at times to perform special rituals and ceremonies. They often gain their powers through special training or experience, passing through a journey or test of spirit such as an illness, isolation, physical pain, or an emotional ordeal. Through rituals involving prayers, meditation, songs, dance, pain, or drugs, shamans enter a, tra a trance, often at will. While in trance, they implore deities and powers to take action or to provide special knowledge and power that may assist individuals or the community at large. That is healing, medicinal advice, personal guidance, protection from illness or other attack, fortune telling, and even control over the weather. They are generally associated with small agricultural or semi-nomadic societies, but some are beginning to relocate to urban settings with immigrant communities. The images we see here uh, on the top is actually the earliest known depiction of a Siberian shaman um, drawn by a 17th century Dutchman who called him a priest of the devil and drew clawed feet for the supposed demonic qualities of the man that he had seen. And then on the bottom, this is a modern day shaman in Siberia today. One particular example would be Korean shamanism, which is also sometimes referred to as Shindo. This is a polytheistic and animistic ethnic religion within Korea that dates to prehistory. It involves the worship of gods, ancestors, and nature spirits. The shamans undergo a spiritual experience or pain and psychosis that ends up with their acceptance of spirit possession. So that's when they actually become a shaman. Uh, for female shaman, they're called mudong, and those who are male are called baksu. However, 90 to 95 percent of shamans in Korea are women, which is quite surprising because it is still a patriarchal society. Shamans act as an intermediary between spirits and humanity to solve hitches in life through what are called gut rituals. This involves rhythmic movement, songs, prayers, and the presentation of offerings. Anthropologist Laurel Kendall has studied both private, public and private rituals of women shamans in rural South Korea. She describes how shamans plead, cajole, and bribe their gods, ancestors, or spirits to help them address struggles, illness, or other maladies, and also fight off threats by meddling ghosts and spirits. They invoke a deity. She invokes a deity with whom she has a special relationship to inhabit her during the ritual trance. So once the, the god, the deity spirit has entered the shaman's body, they actually interact, interact directly with the client who has come to visit the shaman. Kendall notes that this is actually could be considered more of a professionalization of Korean household religion in this sense um, that women often engage these same deities and spirits at home to diagnose and heal their families. I've included a link to a blog post from a TED Fellow um, within this module that gives you a first-hand account of what some of these rituals look like and this artist's experience living within Korea, learning about this particular aspect of their culture. When it comes to shamanistic healing, shamanism is based on the premise that the visible world is pervaded by invisible forces or spirits that affect the lives of the living. The causes of disease lie in the spiritual realm, so both spiritual and physical methods need to be used. Shamans, shaman commonly enter the body of their patient to confront the spiritual infirmity and heal them by banishing this infectious spirit. Many have expert knowledge of me native medicinal plants as well, and they often prescribe herbal treatments to their patients. 
Nowadays, there's also something called neo-shamanism, which involves the eclectic range of beliefs and practices that involve attempts to attain altered states in search of visions or healing. You might have heard of these as you know, New Age workshops or retreats, ayahuasca parties, the use of power animals, uh, and really what this comes down to is just cultural appropriation of indigenous cultures from around the world by you know, gurus or these practitioners who decide to, to advertise themselves as having direct knowledge when shamanism is a very spe- specific and particular practice amongst societies that has, goes back into perpetuity, basically. So for our discussion this week, um, we're, uh, the material we're going to talk about draw, is drawn from the content of these videos that you see listed here. And the links, actually you click on the photos here, they will link to the videos themselves. The links are also available within the module itself. So the subjects of each video illustrate alternative healing methods, that being the dispossession of evil spirits and also the healing power of God. So I want you to watch these videos, take careful notes, and then consider and write up your discussion post addressing these two questions that you see here. How are these two perspectives on healing similar or different? Does the cause of suffering or the method of healing matter in these cases? And is belief enough to heal someone? And then for the second question, many of you identify with one of the world's major religions. So how do the behaviors, rituals, or beliefs you observe in these videos resemble or differ from your own religious or spiritual beliefs on healing? 